So welcome back, dear students. So in continuation with yesterday's session on solar energy origin and features, so we have seen how solar energy is originated as a result of thermonuclear fusion reaction inside the sun, and we have seen the characteristics of the sun, and we have seen that sunlight travels a thermal energy generated in the sun from the surface of the sun travels as electromagnetic radiation and reaches the surface of the earth. Today we are going to see the different components of that solar radiation and what happens to solar radiation when it crosses the earth's atmosphere and how that solar radiation is affected by the presence of impurities in the atmosphere. Okay, so let us go to the lecture. So this is the electromagnetic spectrum of radiation. So on the upper hand of the scale you can see the wavelength in meters and the lower side you can see the frequency of different waves in cycles per second. So this is the visible light region on the left hand side at a higher wavelength region you have the IR infrared on the lower wavelength region you have ultraviolet. Now, this is the characteristic of solar radiation reaching the earth, starting from ultraviolet to infrared. And this is the visible form which contributes to the uh, percentage of 44. And UV is less, only 7% age. And infrared is having 48% age, covering a large amount of, I mean, range of rag uh, radiation. So, the highest portion is of the um, order of 45 I mean, uh, of this visible light of the order of 44 percentage. Now, even though infrared 48 percentage is there in the incoming radiation, it will be absorbed and re radiated by the earth surface. Okay, and then whether that infrared radiation will retain in the atmosphere or not will be decided by the greenhouse gases. Okay, that we will see in detail in greenhouse effect. From the sun, the light, the energy travels in the form of radiation, electromagnetic radiation and reaches the surface of the earth. The insulation, solar insulation, is the amount of solar radiation reaching the earth on a flat surface. So there could be three different components for solar radiation coming from the sun and reaching the surface of the earth. When the solar radiation is coming from the sun and reaches the uh, surface of the earth in a straight line, that is called direct radiation. When it is that radiation is getting absorbed by the clouds or impurities or the gases present in the atmosphere and still it has got a chance to reach down the surface that is known as diffuse radiation and still there is another component which will get reflected by large buildings or trees or mountains and still it has got a chance to reach the surface that is called reflected radiation. The so solar insulation is also called Incident solar radiation it is having the units of watts per meter square. The sun's energy is created from the fusion of hydrogen nuclei into that, and these are the different components. So I hope it is clear direct, diffuse, and reflected radiation. So direct radiation is also known as beam radiation or direct beam radiation. So it is used to describe the solar radiation which is traveling in a straight line from the sun and reaches the surface of the earth. Diffuse radiation on the other hand, scattered, scattered form of beam radiation by the molecules and particles 
present in the atmosphere till it has made it down to the surface of the earth and global radiation is a sum of direct plus beam radiation i mean sorry diffuse radiation and direct radiation plus diffuse radiation is called global radiation so you can see here more clear picture solar radiation enters the upper layer of the atmosphere and it is traveling on a straight line called beam radiation and this beam radiation could get absorbed by the different particles in the atmosphere and it may get scattered by the water particles or impurities or gases present and still it will make its way down to the surface where it is to be received okay and some of it may get reflected back from the upper limit itself now when the sky is very clear on a summer day and around the noon time the direct radiation will have the value of around 85 percentage so whatever radiation is received on a particular surface on earth will be of the order of 85 percentage of direct radiation if the sky is clear and the sun is very high that is around 12 noon to 1 pm diffuse radiation only will be about 15 percentage but when the sun goes down that is in the afternoon or in the morning the percentage of diffuse radiation keeps going up until it reaches 40 percentage on an extremely overcast day cloudy day pretty much 100 percentage will be of the solar insulation will be diffuse radiation so generally speaking the larger the percentage of diffuse radiation if it is cloudy or morning or evening the diffuse radiation will be higher the insulation will be lower the intensity of solar radiation watts in watts per meter square received on a particular surface will be less so here you can see on the there are two curves y axis is the global or diffuse radiation flux and the x axis you have the time from 6 am to 6 pm on a particular day okay the lower curve this lower almost flat curve is the diffuse flux over the period of time and the upper curve is the global flux okay the difference between these two is the direct flux direct radiation flux so you can see here the diffuse radiation is slightly increasing and slowly becoming zero okay at the same time the global radiation is the maximum here it is a maximum here so the variation or the period of time on a particular day now coming to the terminology these are the terms irradiance solar irradiance you can see here a surface is placed here perpendicular to the rays the amount of power received from the sun over a given area of earth is called irradiance watts per meter square now the irradiance is measured at a particular instant of a day if you want to have the solar radiation received on a surface a particular area over a period of time for example 9 am to 12 noon or 9 am to 3 pm or 9 am to 6 pm over a day for this much hours if you want to calculate so this will be the variation of solar irradiance right solar irradiance so solar radiation equals area under this irradiance curve or cumulative irradiance is irradiation the so total total solar radiance over time or a period of time is called irradiation i hope the difference between irradiance and irradiation is clear now before defining solar constant we will see what an astronomical unit is So one astronomical unit is equal to approximately how much miles? Nine crores thirty lakhs miles. Nine crores thirty lakh miles of distance. That is the approximate distance between the Earth and the Sun. The solar radiation takes only eight point three minutes to. reach from the sun to earth can you imagine that much fast it is the solar constant is the amount of radiation received 
amount of electromagnetic radiation, solar electromagnetic radiation received just outside the earth's atmosphere is called solar constant. It is the amount of incoming solar radiation per unit area that would be incident on a plane perpendicular to the rays, a plane perpendicular to the rays at a distance of 1 astronomical unit. That is the mean distance from the sun to earth. So its value is 1.353 kilowatts per meter square. So we can have 1353 watt per square meter. That is the maximum amount of solar radiation we can get just outside the Earth's atmosphere. So what you can understand from this? The maximum amount of energy what you can receive on the surface of the Earth will be less than this value. Obviously. Once it enters the atmosphere, it will undergo so much of absorption, scattering and all. So obviously, what we are going to get will be pretty much less than this. So this constant is fairly constant, increasing by only 0.2% at the peak of 11 years solar cycle. Now, saying the solar constant and solar insulation, the atmospheric clarity index could be defined as the ratio of solar insulation to solar constant. Solar insulation is the amount of energy received on the surface of the earth and solar constant is the maximum amount of solar radiation which could be received just outside the earth's atmosphere. Right. So this ratio is called atmospheric clarity index and its value varies from 0 0.1 to 0 0.7 on a cloudy day and a clear day respectively. Now, suppose the solar radiation has reached the surface of the earth and it has uh, reached or touched the object or the surface. So, what will happen to the radiation when it strikes an object? Depending on the properties of the surface, a part of it will get reflected, right? If it is a white surface, polished surface, the entire energy will get reflected. Suppose if it is a black surface, it will get absorbed. If it is a transparent surface, like glass, what will happen? It will get transmitted, right? So depending on the type or condition or material of the surface, there could be three phenomena happening to the radiation falls on the or strikes on the, on the surface. Part of it will get reflected, part of it will get absorbed and the remaining will get transmitted. The sum of these three will be the, the radiation. Right? So this will be divided into three. The incoming incident solar radiation will be divided into reflected absorbed and transmitted components. So based on that we have three different properties reflectance, absorbance and transmittance. Rho, alpha and tau. The sum of these three will be equal to 1 or 100 percent each. For a black body the absorptivity will be 1. That means reflectivity and transmittivity will be 0. For a glass which is made up of wood material the transmittivity will transmissivity will be one for a white polished specimen or surface the reflectivity will be one the remaining two components will be two so that we will see in detail in the transfer now in the coming session we will discuss about greenhouse effect which is a useful effect that makes the life possible on the surface of the earth so i request all of you to Subscribe to my channel so that you will get lectures similar to this, short lectures, very short lectures of energy, thermodynamics, fluid mechanics and all other subjects related to uh, coming under the thermal stream of mechanical engineering. So you can expect um, a session on engineering drawing also very soon. So please subscribe and Keep the notifications on and share with your friends and students in other institutes also. So keep watching. Have a good day.
Thank you.